All right, the next one is the confidence interval for the population standard deviation. And this one, you have two separate formulas. Um, you use alpha divided by 2, and then you also use 1 minus alpha divided by 2 because you're using chi squared. And this one, unfortunately, does not have a graphing calculator option. And so you just have to use the formula in order to do this one. But here's what this one looks like. It says a psychologist wants to estimate the standard deviation IQ scores. It is widely believed that the IQ scores for a following follow a normal distribution. Her random sample of 26 IQ scores has a mean of 104.5 and a standard deviation of 15.6. Find the 95% confidence interval for the population standard deviation. Notice it says population standard deviation. That's how you know that that's the one that you're going to do. Population standard deviation based on the sample, then complete the table. So if we're using our formula, we are going to have her random sample of 26. So N is going to be 26. Has a mean of 104.5. You're not even going to use the mean in this formula. The standard deviation, S, is going to be 15, whoops, 15.6. And then we're going to do a 95% confidence interval. So again, since this is 95%, we are going to do 100% minus 95%. And so we are going to use 5% for our alpha value when we use our formula. So plugging that into the formula, we are going to have the square root of n minus 1, so 26 minus 1, you could just put 25 there, but I'm just going to do the formula, and then I'm going to have 15.6 squared, s squared, over chi squared, which is going to be on your calculator, Oh, and then I'm going to have alpha 0 0.05 divided by 2. And so I'm going to use that for my first formula. I am going to go over here and grab the Alex calculator. Zoom in on that so you can see a little better. So we are going to have the square root of, in parentheses, 26 minus 1, and then in parentheses, 15.6 parentheses squared, get the x squared down there. Then I'm going to highlight that part of my formula. Whoops, i got to get that first parentheses. And I am going to divide that by chi squared, so right there's your chi squared, of your alpha 0 0.05 divided by 2. And then I need my degree of freedom. Again, I forgot to do my degree of freedom, but my degree of freedom is n minus 1. So 26 minus 1 is going to be 25 for my degree of freedom. So degree of freedom is n minus 1, so my degree of freedom is 25. And so when I hit equal there, I get 12.234. I'm rounding my answer to two decimal places, so I am going to have 12.23. 12.23 when I round that off to my nearest hundredth or my two decimal places. I'm again going to just do the undo on here. And so on my formula here, I'm going to change my formula so it's 1 minus this. So I'm just going to put my cursor in front, of, there we go, in front of that fraction. I'm going to add 1 minus in front of that. And so you can see there I have chi squared and then I have 1 minus my alpha value divided by 2. My degree of freedom is still 25. And so that's all I did to change that is add the 1 minus in front of that fraction. And when I hit equal there, I get 21.53, 21.534, so 21.53 
for my answer. And so that's the way that formula works. And so I'm going to go to more practice here and pull up another one. And I'll go ahead and remind you on the notes. If I find my notes here, that you do have to do the degree of freedom. The degree of freedom is n minus 1. So up there you have n minus 1. Down here you're also going to have n minus 1 when you do your problem. So if I go to the next one here on Alex, zoom out so we can see that question. Hopefully you'll still be able to read it when I get zoomed out all the way. But it says, pilots who cannot maintain regular sleep hours due to their work schedule often suffer from insomnia. A recent study on sleeping patterns of pilots focused on quantifying deviations from regular sleep hours, a random sample of 28 commercial airline pilots was interviewed. So my N is going to be 28. And the pilots in the sample reported the time at which they went to sleep on their most recent working day. The study gave the sample mean and the standard deviation of the times reported by the pilots with these times measured in hours after midnight. Thus, if the pilot reported going to sleep at 11 p.m., the measurement was negative 1. The sample mean was 0 0.6, and again, you don't need the sample mean when you do these ones. The standard deviation was 1.7 hours, so S is going to be 1.7. Assume that the sample is drawn from a normally distributed population. Find the 90% confidence interval for the population standard deviation. That's my clue that this is the problem I'm doing, population standard deviation. And I'm doing my 90% confidence interval. And so when I go over here on my paper, scratch paper, I'm going to do 100 minus 90, which then means I'm going to have 10%, which is 0.10. And so in my formula, I'm going to have the square root of 28 minus 1 times 1 1.7 squared over chi squared. And then I'm going to use 10% divided by 2. My degree of freedom is 28 minus 1. So 27 is going to be my degree of freedom. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to my Alex calculator. Zoom that in a little bit. And so when I go to the Alex calculator here, we are going to have the square root of parenthesis 28 minus 1. Close my parenthesis. Parenthesis. Ooh, that didn't give me the parenthesis at the beginning. I got a 9 there instead. There's my parenthesis. Parenthesis, 28 minus 1, then 1 1.7, which was my standard deviation, squared. So I got to make sure I hit the x squared down here to put the squared on that. I want to highlight that and divide that by chi squared. So now I'm going to use the chi squared symbol. I know it looks like the x squared, but the chi squared of... 10% divided by 2 with a degree of freedom of 27 since I'm using n minus 1 there. You can almost see that whole formula in there. If I hit equal and round that off to two decimal places, I have 1.394, so 1.39. I'm then going to go ahead and undo that. And in front of that fraction, I'm going to click. I'm going to do 1 minus in front of that fraction. And that's all I'm going to do to change my formula. If I hit equal then, I have 2.197. So that's going to round off to 2.20 instead of 197. I have to round it off to 20. 19 rounds up to 20. So 2.20. So I have 1.39 for my lower, 2.20 for my upper. If I check that, 
you can see that we got it correct if I go over there. And so that's how that formula works. It is one you can't use the graphing calculator to do, but isn't too bad to do when you have to work out the formula.